Last year, I bought an iPhone 7, and honestly, it's been great. But recently, my iPhone's really been screwing up, which made me think, does Apple do this on purpose? In December 2017, Apple admitted to slowing down older iPhones without user consent. This was reportedly done to protect against problems caused by aging batteries. Are these updates really designed to prolong the life and performance of my phone? Or are they rolled out so that I get so frustrated that I eventually need to buy the newest iPhone? So, is it a coincidence or conspiracy? Well, it's actually a real business practice called planned obsolescence. Make sense, make a product people love and make it last just long enough. This guarantees consumers will demand replacements in the future, thus naturally supporting demand. A vicious, genius cycle. The best example of this, the Phoebus Cartel, otherwise known as the Great Light Bulb Conspiracy. On the 23rd of December, 1924, representatives from the top light bulb manufacturers gathered in Geneva, Switzerland. Since the invention of the light bulb in 1878, manufacturers vied for market share and a technological edge. Competition was tough, with not one company securing control. So, to ease the stress, members decided to lower the life of light bulbs. Prior to 1924, the average light bulb lasted 1,800 hours. The companies agreed to aim for 1,000 hours. Here is the effect. Lifespans declined over time, from an average of 1,800 hours in 1926 to 1,205 hours in fiscal year 1933. In 1926, the cartel sold 335.7 million light bulbs worldwide. Four years later, sales had climbed to 420.8 million light bulbs. Clearly, this was a huge success for the light bulb companies. But it came to an end in 1940 during World War II as international communication became increasingly difficult. Despite stricter regulation, planned obsolescence still exists today. Ink cartridges come with chips that disable printing when just one color is used up. Car companies make parts model year specific, meaning that with every new model, new specific parts are required. So manufacturing products designed to fail is an actual thing. But what about Apple? Do they do it too? Apple did admit to slowing down older iPhones in December, but they claim it's not planned obsolescence. Instead, they say they are prolonging the life of older phones. Apple is even facing lawsuits over this, but they are still planning to continue the practice in the future. And what about durability? Are the phones designed to be fragile? Sure, Apple could make their phones tougher, but maybe they'd be bulkier and uglier. Consumers are demanding thinner, sleeker, and sexier phones. So durability has kind of taken a back seat. But why does the whole thing need to be made of glass? The iPhone X is encapsulated in glass for the purpose of wireless charging. Metal interferes with charging. Glass doesn't. But neither does plastic, and that's what the back of the Nokia Lumia is made of. So why doesn't Apple use that? Regardless, people are already dropping them. And the glass is breaking on both sides. Replacing the front screen costs $279, but the back, wait for it, that costs $550. The jury is out on whether Apple intentionally builds their phones to fail. But don't you want the new iPhone anyway? Apple became the most profitable company in the world, not because of planned obsolescence, but because they developed an insanely loyal consumer base that is absolutely addicted to their devices. So I got one last thing. There is one more thing. But there is one more thing. It is our new MacBook Air. What's special about this mouse? Well, it's wireless. This is iPhone 10. It is the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. Let us know in the comments below and please like and subscribe.